Hello and welcome to today's episode on Diaspora Money Today. I am Abdul Rashid Abubakar. I am joined on today's live podcast series by Mr. Douglas Anthony Eze, a visionary leader and chief marketing officer, True Legacy Live Group. Welcome, Mr. Douglas. How are you today? Man, I'm doing awesome. I can't complain at all. Let's uh, jump into uh, today's uh, conversation. Okay. Um, first, can you tell me about the business operation of an insurance professional? Okay. Yeah, definitely. So an insurance professional, their job is to offer insurance and there's different types of insurance right there's health insurance that's one um industry health insurance there's pnc <clears throat> that's another industry okay. and then there's life insurance industry okay so all three have different roles that they play okay now there's some agents that have the pnc license and that's all they have some agents have health and life and but they only focus on health insurance right the property and casualty agents that's a pnc they do car insurance homeowners insurance they focus on that and then the life insurance agent focuses on selling life insurance. Okay. So the job of an insurance agent, in my opinion, what I teach the guys in my group and the ladies in my group, is I say, listen, look at yourself as a, as a doctor. Now, there's different levels of, you know, medical, medical practice. Right? So you look at yourself as a doctor, and you're meeting patients that are looking for financial guidance. Because as an insurance professional, it's so it, it makes it even easier because you're dealing with the public. Right. So they're coming to you because they either trust you, they know you, whatever the case might be. It's your duty to really understand the business to a level, not just on a basic level, because people are trusting you with their life because you're protecting their value. Unfortunately, a lot of insurance agents don't understand what role they're playing in people's life. You know, and that's why we take it seriously, a true legacy life, because we believe with our company, when somebody comes to us, they're trusting us to put value on their life. I want to make sure that is important because we don't want somebody feeling guilty for what they, you know, for spending money. Okay, right. That, you know right, what I mean? Right, right. right a lot right. of people make you feel guilty. Why don't you have life insurance? You should buy life. Why are you buying this before? No, that's not the... They don't know. So our job is to educate, help them understand it correctly. Okay, so, we're going to get to that understanding. Okay, okay. You know, but um, then let's go to um, how long does it take to be a certified life insurance professional? Good question. So the key is you got to keep learning, right? So the first step is getting the license. Okay. The, that's the first step. Now, getting the license don't mean anything. All you do is just pass a test. Okay. That's it. You pass the test. Some people are good test takers. Right, right, I'll give right. you an example. I didn't know nothing about insurance. Even education wasn't my thing. I mean, I, you know, I, I went to school. I, I you are a businessman. Right. Yeah. No, even that. He, before that. Because when we're in school... Most of us, some of us are playing. We have the smart kids that know the book. They, they could read a book and they could tell you everything. I wasn't that guy, you know. So when he, but you could take a test and pass a test right. if you, you know, understand what you, what you read or whatever the case might be. Now, taking the test yes. and passing is one thing. One thing. Now you need to now elevate your box of knowledge. So for me, and I can only talk about myself and people in my organization because that's who I see. So when I got into this industry, I was just like everybody else, basic knowledge. But I got, I got sick and tired of just basic knowledge because when I realized quickly that my clients are trusting me, not the insurance company, not, they don't care about the insurance company. They're trusting me because I'm going to them and offering them service, especially if I'm going to deal with my family and friends. Those are people that are close to you, right? Right, right. So that's... I need to make sure that whatever level of knowledge I'm going to be sharing with them is very, very important. So every level of education, you got to keep educating yourself in the business to get into becoming a 
professional, just like a doctor graduating from um, school. Medical school. Medical school. Doesn't just start performing surgery right away. Right. He goes through residency. Right. But that's the problem with some entrepreneurs. They forget that, and which is why I relate this to being a medical, um, I call it a medical doctor in the financial field. Because once you become licensed, the next thing now, you, you need to now go into residency, work with someone that can educate you, teach you the ropes. You all might have to split some sales together to make so that you're making money in the process, just like a residency doctor makes money. Or internship. In, in, internship. Well, some internship, you know, the money is less. <laughs> but it's still a good idea. You know, residency, at least you're making some money. Right. It might not be the big salary, but yeah. at least you're getting something. The difference between this is you're going to make good income, but you also get more knowledge. So at the same time. At the same time. So, And I believe knowledge is more valuable than money. So it looks like that's hands-on training. Training. Ongoing. Mentorship. Yes, exactly. That's the key. You know, and that's what, what I do. I let my, my reps know I'm, I'm a coach. I'm not their boss, you know, because an entrepreneur is not looking for a boss. You're looking for a team. You're looking for a team. You're looking for a mentor. You're looking for a coach. You know, they'll coach you. Now, if you're going to pick somebody to be your coach, that means you need, you need to be coachable. It's just like Michael Jordan, right? He had a coach, and he listened to whatever the coach said. No matter how good Michael was, when the coach says, you need to Stop. come to training. Right, you need to he come, come to, train. to training. Right. You need to practice. You need to do some laps. Right. He does it. He didn't say, I'm Michael Jordan. I don't need that training. Right, right. See? Right. So if you want to elevate, unfortunately for so many people, when they get into business, they're like, oh, I'm the boss. I don't listen to anybody. Well, a boss stands for, when you spell it backward, it stands for double SOB. Hmm. Double SOB. Son of a. <laughs> 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 Mr. Douglas, that's, uh, you know, that's so interesting. Okay, so now, um, having understand that aspect of yes. the industry, you know, what are some myths okay. and misconceptions mm -hmm. about life insurance policies that you would like to share with our audience? Oh, great. There? Especially for immigrants that come here, and I'm talking now to all the black people. Now, I don't know about the culture, because I know about black folk, right? Some black people feel like life insurance is just for debt. And I get it, because that's the way they've that's been portrayed. That's, that's a, a myth. myth. Because that's what they've been told all these years. Just get a small policy for burial. But the wealthy and the banks see it different. It's putting value on you. Now, for a lot of us that don't know, because we don't have things like this growing up. We don't understand that, right? And that's fine. But now you got to seek knowledge, especially when you start hearing a lot about it. So one of the myths we hear is life insurance is just for debt, or you shouldn't use life insurance to pack money. It's not a savings, it's not an investment. Don't invest. Invest in the market. You know, all this information sounds, you know, exciting for people hearing it, but not digging deep. So I heard that when I first got into the industry. I okay. didn't know anything. I was pushing the same thing I've been hearing in the media. You know, buy term insurance, invest the difference. We hear a lot of that. Nothing wrong with that concept because term insurance is a good product. Right. You know, but then when I started sitting back and listening, and I as, and as a financial advisor back then, because I have all my securities license, I was able to talk to people and offer them investments like mutual funds, stocks, and all the other stuff. But I started asking myself a question. I'm like, wait a minute. People are losing money in the market. When right. the market crashes, crashes, you know, the government don't come rescue us. Mm -hmm. We hear the government rescuing, going in and, and shutting companies down when somebody scams them, right? The right. Ponzi schemes. Are, I'm like, but why you don't do that with when a mutual fund company loses my money? Hmm. When I lose money, because that's broad daylight robbery. Right. Because you just lost your whole life savings in a, in a fund. Nobody's rescuing it. So I'm like, well, you know what? I need to figure this out. The only company that I know stands strong is insurance companies. So I started investigating insurance companies to see, okay, how powerful are they? So I started realizing even banks put money in life insurance. I'm like, if banks are putting money in life insurance, that says a lot. And then I looked at the form. I actually put it on here. I'll show you. 
you know, and I said, wait a minute, that's why I wrote this book. I said, you know, residential loan application, you know, when you're buying a house, right. when you're buying a house, there's a big bold print on there that says assets. And underneath that asset, it says cash value insurance. You see that? I see it. When I see you it. apply for a business loan, there's a big bold thing on there that says In cash value insurance. Value insurance yeah. I'm like, why are they having it on this application? If it's a bad thing, why is the banks asking me if I have that as an asset right. class? Right. Back in the day, they told us I couldn't put insurance as an asset. Mm -hmm. I couldn't say it's an asset. It's I'm an like, asset, right. what? But then the bank is saying it's an asset. They right. compare to a mutual fund, they compare to a savings account, to the stock market, all these things. So I said, okay, I need to, I, I, I got to stop listening to these jokers and I need to stop watching TV and change my mindset. So those myths, you know, life insurance is not just for debt. It's not, it, it's a place you pack money. And yes, it's not an investment like your traditional investment, but it's the only, only vehicle that will accomplish what you want, meaning you buy it, you, you're using a penny to buy a dollar. If I'm using a penny to buy a dollar, how many dollars will you buy? As many as you can, right? As much as you can. You're going to put up all your money to buy a huge amount of dollars if you're using a penny. And life insurance is the only vehicle that allows you to do that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, we're going to get more into get that. deep. Right. So, um, can you guide me uh, through the step-by-step, -step, you know, process of signing up for life insurance? Then okay. we're going to get to the part of talking about trust and we, because okay. some of our audiences have already asked me about trust. Okay. Which I want you to talk about. But can you guide me on the step-by-step the process. Step process of signing up for life insurance? Yes. So, I always relate life insurance to real estate. Okay. All right. Mortgages. You know, when you want to buy a house, because that's the word we've been brainwashed to do. Buy a house, buy a house, buy a house, right? Invest. And everybody wants to buy a house. Okay, cool. So I relate it to that. How, how so? So here's a tip for those of you that are insurance agents. This is how you should explain it to your client. Life insurance, just like real estate, the only way you qualify for it is based on your credit. Now, what's your credit? Your health is your credit. So you have to have great health. If you're already sick, like, for example, you have cancer. You've already lost out. You can't get life insurance. So that means you have bad health, bad credit. Now, once you're good health, and I always believe it's a good idea to set up insurance for your children, especially if they're, the day they give, you give birth to them, plan and put life insurance on them immediately. Maybe, you know, some companies allow you two weeks to do it. You put insurance on them right away. What you've done is you've set your child up to be ahead of the competition. What's the competition? Every child that was born the same day as your child is the competition for your child. Financial competition, right? So your child is already ahead of the game. So that's false. Then um, with life insurance, understanding that it's like your health is your credit. So you're in good health. You buy it. But then you need to now do evaluation of how much you really want on you. You know, it's not a need product. It's a want product. What do I want to happen when I go away? Well, if I understand that my value is more important because you as a human being, you're a property. So how much value are you putting on yourself? So the way you evaluate your property, your value is by saying, okay, I bring in this amount of income. If I make $100,000 a year income, then I need to put a lot of value on me because if, if something happens to me, my family, that 100000 stops. It goes away because I'm right. no longer getting it. Right. So I get 100000 and I say, okay, let me multiply it by 10 years. That's a million dollars. That means I need to put a million dollars of insurance on myself to protect me. Now we now have to decide, okay, do I do a million dollar cash value insurance or a million dollar term insurance? Then now it depends on how you see the policy. Do you see the policy as just for debt? Then you could do term insurance. Or you see the policy as a place to pack money. So instead of you packing all your hard-earned savings in a bank where you're getting 0.2% interest, then why don't pack it in insurance where you're at least getting a value? One, you're giving the insurance company your money, and they're exchanging your money for value to protect you. 
Just like when we buy a house, right? We buy a house, the value of the house is 400000 The bank says, well, before you walk away, you need to put homeowner's insurance on that property, property in right. case it burns down, in case somebody breaks in and steals something. Homeowner's insurance will pay. What if you break down? What if you burn down? What, if you, what do you mean break down? Well, if you get sick, what would the policy do for you? For you. So now we've got to talk about living benefits in the insurance policy. Where there's over, there's different types of living benefits. A lot of companies push living benefits and take, most of these agents don't even understand how it works. I'm one of those agents. I didn't know how it works for years until I said, wait a minute. Everybody's pushing living. Let me see what's the difference between this company and this company. And then I started finding out the difference, especially when a client files a claim. Right. At the time, because a lot of living benefits, they tell you, oh, you know, when you have cancer, you're sick, you're going to get money while you're sick. And we tell them how much they're going to get when we're selling, because we're salespeople. We tell them how much they're going to get when, they sell, when they, they're sick. And then when they get sick, especially when they need the money the most, and I told you, you're going to get a 500000 And then I find out the insurance company say, nah, it's 100000 right. Or they might say, no, we decline it. Right, right. See, that kills me, right? Because I'm like, wait a minute. That means I lied to this client. Client, right. Because I didn't understand it when I sold it. Because I didn't ask the right question. So I'm like, nah, we're going to stop that nonsense. I need to align myself with the right company that if I say to my client, because remember, the clients are trusting me, not the insurance. They don't care about the insurance company. They don't give a care. I've never had a client ask me one day, oh, What's the rating of this insurance company? Never. Never, right. They've never asked. They're buying me. So mm-hmm. it's my duty to understand. Not what my manager's saying. I don't care what my manager's saying. Because at the end of the day, I study for the test myself. Right. So I need to go do the research myself. Right. So right. I started asking questions, and I started going in and digging deeper to find companies that say, okay, here's what's going to happen. If your client has cancer, and they're laid up in the hospital, and the doctor said they have six months to live, in the policy, and you told them, Douglas, you said, client, if you're sick and you need to pay your mortgage, your family needs the money now while you're laid up, you're going to get $500,000. And this is what I showed you. That's what my client is getting. Nothing, no discount, no, I hate that. And, you know, we found companies that do that. And that we were able to use that for our clients. You know, a lot of times, folks get emotionally attached to an insurance company. Oh, that's my company. They don't know you. They'll get rid of you so quickly. Right. Because they're in business to make money. money. They're not the for non-profit. Because mm-hmm. if I'm sick, they're not going to give me coverage. They're not going to say, Douglas, <laughs> you know, you've been one of our guys for 20, 30 years. No. Nope. Here's life insurance. They will never do that. If I'm sick, they'll treat me the same way as you, the consumer. So if that's the case, I need to be on the side of the consumer, consumer. not right. the side of them. That makes sense? They make a lot of sense. Yes, sir. So now... That is life insurance. Yes. Let's talk about trust. Okay. How does... That's tell great. me, what is trust? Yes. Great question. So, as a human being, right, mm. we all know one thing. We're going to pass away. We right. just don't know when it's going to happen. Right. Right? So, knowing that we're going to pass away, the wealthy in America and the U.S. government understand what a trust is. And they created this law. A trust is a contract. It's a piece of paper that says when you die, this piece of paper becomes alive Hmm. and start doing everything you put in there for it to do. Because think about it. We as human beings, we have a lot of ideas in our mind. If you have a baby, you're like, ah, in your mind, I want my baby to go to ABC person, right? Mm. In your mind. <laughs> Correct. Nothing written. Mm. And then you die. And the you are in America, most people don't know this, the U.S. government, the day your child is born becomes an asset to the U.S. government. That's another thing most people don't understand. They become a U.S. government asset. Now, if you don't have a will or a trust in place, the government, the court system in the state that you're in, Will tell you where, will tell your loved ones where that child is gonna go. Hmm. It might not go to your parents that you thought was going because now they gotta evaluate those parents to see if they fit for to take care of that child. So they might send it, especially for single people 
that might not have a good relationship with their other spouse that they don't want, and they've been raising the child themselves. Well, unfortunately, if you don't have anything written down, guess what? That child will go to the your ex that you didn't want the child to go to. Mm. Becomes a huge issue. issue. So, but if you have things written down, yeah, the child might still go to the ex, but your assets, though, don't go to them. See? Your assets, like your house, your bank account, all these things, what the government do when somebody dies, they do a valuation, which is another thing a lot of business owners don't do. See, with our company, we don't just sit down and sell you a policy. No, I need to understand everything that has to happen in your financial world. We do valuation, you know, if you're a business owner. Because the government is going to do evaluation of all your businesses. The first thing that happens when somebody dies, when you call the bank and say, oh, so my ex so-and-so just died. They freeze the account. Right, right. Immediately. And you got to go to court and the, a court has to appoint somebody to manage that estate. So you as a human being, you are an estate. What? Real estate, right? Property. Human estate. You. Somebody has to now manage everything that's tied to your social security number. So a trust comes in and says, okay, him don't own that property. This piece of paper owns the property. And he also said, who in this piece of paper needs to get stuff? Hmm. You're laid up in the hospital. You can only move your eyes from one right, from the right to left, and you're here. You're still conscious, but you're in a coma, <laughs> and you're hearing your family member because that's where they start fighting, start talking, and you like listening to them talk about divide all your assets up, or they say, okay, I need to pull the plug, you know, oh, don't pull the plug, pull the plug. You are like, man, I'm not dead yet, and then they pull the plug because they want to get the money, right? They fight to get all that stuff. Right. A trust will make sure that doesn't happen. And then a trust will also say who you want in charge of pulling the plug. Mm. See, because you have to have somebody that you trust that say, okay, man, listen, I'm going to put you down here. If anything ever happens, I'm in the hospital. I've put you down as my medical director to say what, you know, based on our relationship, you know what I want. And you can do it. So that's going to be the um, yes. power of attorney or power. executor. Yes. So power of attorney is different, but it's right. Same thing. You could do a power of attorney, but it's not as powerful as, as a trust. trust. Okay. You know, a, a power of attorney is okay, but so, a trust is a lot so more stronger. So back to my question. Mm -hmm. So when is the best time to put to a do trust it, to in place? Great question. So I say in my book, because I, I consulted one of my um, attorney friends and uh, he passed away now. And one thing that he said in my book, he said, if you have assets, at least, um, he says, living trust should be considered by all persons whose total estate exceeds $75,000. Okay. All right, 75. And this is a living trust. Now, there's about 80 different types of trust. So this, this one, we're just talking about living trust. Yeah. So once you have a house mm -hmm. and your house value is over $75,000, your you estate, so different from the house. Your estate means everything that your social security number owns. Okay. So house, car, bank accounts, business, all that. If your total estate, your total value, value of is, asset, of asset is, is over seventy five thousand, it's a good time to do a living trust. Why? You know, and that's a living trust. Okay. Which is allows you your voice probate, protects you in case something happens. So that your family don't fight over your estate at debt. Now, when you die, a living trust becomes what they call a irrevocable living trust at debt. It changes. It, it, nobody can make changes. To so it. when I do the trust, mm -hmm. do I have to give it to a lawyer to sign it, take it to a court for the judge to assent to it? Because these are all the Great. pieces that people want to understand. Great question. Now, awesome. That's a great question. So, um, today, so many people are doing trust. They take a template and they create a trust. It, it's online. It's everywhere. Exactly. Everybody's doing one. So, what I say is this. Find a company that is reputable. That can do it for you. Do so you do it? We have relationships. Okay. Of people that do it. I can't do it because okay. that's not what I do. That's not what you do. Yeah. Right. So, but I have relationship 
of companies that do it correctly, that we vetted already, okay. that we know they can do it. And then what I do, because I can educate my do clients Do you have an idea it. of how much they charge? Yes. So depend on the type of trust. So the first thing to do is understand what type of trust you're trying to do. That is, uh, uh, let's talk about the, the basic, trust. the living trust. Yeah. So it goes anywhere from fifteen hundred dollars okay. to three grand. Okay. okay. Right okay. for a living trust. Okay. Now just understand the living trust protects your asset at debt. Right. Right. Doesn't protect your asset while you're living. Living. Right. Because right. you can make changes to it. Right, right. You know, but it's a great trust to have as a start. Okay. As your asset starts growing, that's why it's good to work with a an advisor. Well, somebody like myself that's more like a specialist. That as your wealth starts growing, right. we start telling you, okay, there's other things, other types of trust to create. Because again, there's a lot of parents that have children that have special needs. Right, exactly. You know what I mean? So do we need to create a special needs trust? For the child, for the to child. protect the child. So all these conversations is things we need to know. That's why one thing I do is I like seeing the family tree to understanding what's going on in my client's life first before we start prescribing medication. Right, right, right. You right. know, we don't just prescribe a product to someone just because they want, they told me, they came into my office and said, I want life insurance. I don't work that way. Go, go to Ethos or, you know, go get the free one online or whatever. Life insurance is not something you're going to buy that way. Treat life insurance as you going into a doctor's office right. to do evaluation on your health. Don't treat life insurance as if you're buying um, groceries. Groceries, that's yeah. a good Yeah, and yeah. You're, you're negotiating the price or whatever the case might be. I mean, the price are set, those different companies, but you, you, can't, you can't go to a, a, an insurance. Um, how much life insurance you want? Um, uh, give me some for fifty dollar, fifty dollar. Can I get some fifty dollar? No, this is not that kind of party. We don't do that. I don't. I don't know. We what have that to means. break it down. I gotta understand your life, life yeah. your whole estate value. Right. So now we've talked about trust. Yeah. Let's now move to will. Mm-hmm. So which one supersede? Because if I have a, a will, great. yes. Right. Does my will supersede the trust? Or yeah. my trust supersede my will? Man, love the question. Okay. So my friend put on here, you know, his name is Joseph Pimpin. He's so let rest in peace. Amen. What is the difference between having a will and having a trust? That's the question, basically. I commonly use the following chart to help people understand the difference between wills and trusts. So a will, wills go to probate court. And cost for probate is 3 to 10%. A trust avoids probate. Mm. Time of probate, 6 to 14 months. Time of probate with a trust, zero. That's so, right. Because okay. you could do a will by itself. By itself, yes. Yes, you could just write that out and do all that. But, but that goes You need probate, something to protect it. You need something to protect that will. Right. So, basically, <laughs> trust is very important. It is very important. It's so very why, strong. So, why is, it, why, why is it no one talking about it? Well, because people are controlled by the media. So let me explain. <laughs> the media, the government, and the banks, three of them. Now, for those of you that work at the bank, it's not your bank. You don't own it. So let me tell you, that's not your bank. You're a civilian just like me. For those of you that work for the government, you don't own the country. The go you're an employee of the government. For those of you that work in the media, you don't own. These are all institutions. So don't be upset at me about what I'm about to say. You're working for an entity they already created a system because that entity, guess what? A lot of them are owned by a trust. A trust doesn't die. A trust lives on forever. So if you are working, even the president of the United States pays, he has to have a trust. If he doesn't have a trust, he passes. Everything goes to probate court. Trust, the court, probate court don't discriminate. They don't care who you are. The day you die, everything goes to probate. So if you're not fully protected... Everything goes to probate court. It belongs to the government, the media, and the banks. How do they? Because they, I call them the three um, brothers and sisters. They love each other because their job is to work together to brainwash the people. So they're not going to give you information like that. Why? Because why should they give you that information? And then for the immigrants that come to America, they don't know the rules. They don't understand how to play in the game. 
all their we especially folks that come from countries where there's no electricity, there's no water, there's no ro- good there's roads. no good roads, and you come here and you see all this and you're like grateful, thank you, and you could get a job and you get a salary and they pay you. Because, you know, where sometimes they don't pay people. Yeah, 14 months, 18 right. months. Right. <laughs> so when you're here, you could get your money. You could do everything. And if somebody mess around, you could call the government, sue them, take them to court, call the police, whatever. So you're busy. We're grateful. We're working hard until death happens. And then all that money goes back to the government. All that hard and hard and money, money goes back to the government. Because the information that they share with you on the media, especially where the most people, every financial advisor, every attorney, every CPA, every professional, they all listen to the media. They're all controlled by the media. And the media, is their job is to brainwash the people. So the more they brainwash you, the more information you're not going to have. And unfortunately for so many people, they just like to party, especially... Us black people. And I say black people, I mean everybody that's black. We like to enjoy. We like good stuff. And that's okay. I love to enjoy too. But my friend, protect yourself. Because you brought you, you got married. You have children. No, the children didn't want to come. You decide to you have know, kids. You know, I, I, I saw <laughs> something in the news yesterday. Okay. One big, one big folks out there. You know, he's one of big name. He said one of the greatest fear he has in his life mm. is having a kid. Wow, having a child. Really, I was like, really greatest fear. Interesting. Greatest fear. And some people really? have many children. You know. So let's uh, go to the step by step, okay. uh, Mr. Douglas. Uh, you know, can you on your um, system? show what life insurance can do for people yes so one thing that we teach right you know is how you can let me just pull this up real quick you know is how you can use insurance as a as a tool not just for debt but to do what pay off massive amounts of debt okay because so many people have debt like this situation here this person was going to be in debt for 6.1 6.1 years. Okay. So with our company, one of the things that we teach and we do well is we help our clients become debt-free and build wealth using other people's money. Okay. So in this scenario here, this person's current debt is $259,000. See that? Right, right. See you see it? Right. $259,000. That's his current debt. $259,996. $6, yes. That is his debt. That's his debt. Okay. Total years, 6.1 year. That's how long it's going to be. But then most people forget that the interest you got to pay on the debt. Right, right, right. right. Another 66000 So it came out that when you add up the total, $326,639.84. In debt. In debt. That's why so many people work and they're so stressed out. So what we do is we show folks what the true interest that they're paying on the debt. Like, for example, when you pay, 20.40% of that money goes to interest. 66000 is that total. So a lot of people have been told, make extra payment on your debt. Sounds good. But that's not a good thing to do. Okay. The reason we say that it's not a good thing to do is the only way you're going to pay off a debt is by making a lump sum payment. If you make extra payment, what you're really doing is you're, you're stealing money from your future person. Because okay. that extra dollar that you just gave away to pay this debt off could have been invested on grow over time. You always got to think about opportunity costs. So one thing that we show people is how to use insurance, the right type structured correctly, to not only pay off debt and build wealth. So in this scenario here, I was able to help my client not only pay off all their debt, but build wealth at the same time. I'm just going to go straight to that scenario real quick so that you all could see what we do here. So not only did we pay off the debt in 1.3 years. Yes. This is a lot of debt. Look at that. A lot of debt. Wow. 
Not only did we pay them what for three years, we also saved them forty one thousand dollars in interest. Right, because yeah, because it's supposed to be six point one years. Yes, and now it cut down to one year, one year and, three, and months. three months without them making extra payment. Payment, and then now they freed up seventeen thousand eight hundred forty two dollars a month because that's how much they were paying interest towards the debt every yeah, month. every month to the bill collector, wherever those people are. That's a two hundred and forty nine thousand dollars a year savings. Now, what I also teach my clients is I say, now that you've paid off this debt, what are you going to do with this money? Well, this client listened. And they did what? They, they started re in, redirecting this money into an account that we showed them. Now, in the same time frame, 30 years, that they, you know, because they're young, they're going to have $12 million saved. If they die, their family will get a tax-free check. Tax-free check. Oh, 12. For $12.8 million. Wow. Tax free. Not, not a penny to the government. Wow. So we teach people how to think differently about debt, how to use your money multiple times instead of just one time. Because wow. most people only use their money one, one time. time. You save up $10,000, what do you do? You take it and you pay off a debt because you heard it from the media. Make extra payments. See how the media come in? Pay extra. But, uh, uh, but <laughs> Mr. Douglas, yes. you just blew my mind, right? I, I have a very good friend yes. of mine. And um, recently he told me, oh, you know, I had to refinance my house. Yes. Listen to this. Yes. And um, I said, oh, okay. So how much did you, how much did you get back? He said, oh, I got $60,000 back. Okay. Right. So I said, okay, so... You know what did you do? Mm-hmm. So he, Good question. he so he's got uh, a credit card, okay, with twenty eight thousand dollar max on it, okay. So he spent already about nineteen thousand on the credit card. Yes. So he said, "I pay eighteen thousand dollars to them." Okay. Which was what you just said now. Yes. So now he said, "Then I pay other credit card, you know, that is lesser than that. I pay them off, mm-hmm. right?" So, and he said, well, I was left with like 10,000 K. So I give mm-hmm. that to my wife to also pay some of our debt. Nice. So the money was gone. It's gone. But the problem <laughs> is, yes. now you have another $60,000 added to your mortgage. Yes. Yes. So what would you say to that? Is, you know, was he stupid? No, no. I wouldn't ever say he's stupid. <laughs> Because to me, based on the information he had, from who? The media. Because he didn't understand that that $60,000 that he got, his future person, that's his money. So the way I would have done it, okay, all right, is this. First, we need to understand the power of your dollar. Your dollar today is more valuable than your dollar in the future. So let's break that down. You know, I want to talk about, I want to talk on a, on an episode separately. Yes. Uh, about how powerful is a dollar? Because yes. in the last episode, you talk about I did that, right? the power of a dollar. Yes. And today you've also mentioned it back. the power of, of a, a dollar. dollar. Yes. So people have to get the, to yes. understand. So let's break it down because that's what he just did. He spent okay. 60000 in one day. So let's look at the power of a dollar. Okay. So we're going to go to... There's two types of dollars, right? I mean, money, okay. interest rate. Okay. There's compounding interest and there's amortized interest. Okay. Compounding interest is when I'm making money. You are still making money. When I'm making money, okay. when I'm saving money and I'm earning interest on my money. Compounding is different from speculative. Speculative interest is when you invest money in the market. You're speculating. You don't know what's going to do. That is it's stock. Like it's That's stock, stock like investing in business because it's all speculation. Because right. when you invest in your business, you're hoping to make all this money, right? Because right. people, when they come in my DM, they tell me about this beautiful business idea. Everybody got a business idea. Right. And they want you to invest. Come invest in my business. And they've not put a penny in their business and they want me to give them my, my dollar. Right. Wrong answer. It doesn't even happen. So, um, <laughs> so there's compound interest is when you're earning interest guaranteed interest that I could see, count, understand, I'm going to have it. So if I have a dollar in my compounding interest account, right. that's paying me 5% interest on my dollar. When I fast forward that dollar over time, 
without me adding anything to it. See how it's growing? I didn't add anything to the dollar. See how it's growing? But what if I do this? I save a dollar every month with a 5% return. Look at that. That's now grown to $945,000. Now they're $45 in 32 years. In 31 years. That's just 32, years. 32 okay. just won $1. Yeah, that's, that's one dollar, yeah. Right. So what's the value of that dollar? $945. But if I keep this dollar under my mattress and I get zero interest, how much would the dollar be worth 32 years from now? 384. If I'm saving it every day, every month, it will only be $332. But what if I only have one dollar that I say, you know what? I'm going to just put away under my mattress a dollar today with no interest is a dollar 30 years from now. Right. But if I add interest to it, a dollar today, 32 years from now, is now $5 because it's compounding over time. But what if I make it 60000 like my friend? Look at that. 60000 is now $296,000 in 32, in 32 years. 32 years. Now, he took his 60000 and paid off debt which is based on the knowledge that he has. What I would have done is let my 60000 sit here. I'll continue paying the debt the way it is. Because let's look at the $60,000 debt. Even the interest rate is 7%. 32 years, first of all, when you borrow the money, mm -hmm. the bank says, hey, and I'll shut it down to 30 years. The bank says, listen, how long can you take to pay me this money? Mm -hmm. I'm just about to give you $60,000. I say, well, I could pay over... 30 years. That's, the bank says, okay, can you afford to give me $399 a month? Right. Yeah, I can afford to do that. All right, the bank loans me $60,000 of somebody else's money. Because remember, the money in the bank is not the bank's money. Bank's money, money. yeah. They're using else. people's else's, else's money. Money, yes. They loan me somebody else's money, put it, and, and at that same person, the bank will make $83,000 in interest. If I reduce the interest rate on my compounding interest account, instead of 7%, I bring it to 5%. In the same 30-year period, I'm going to have $268,000 saved. I'm going to have interest earned on my $60,000, $208,000 in interest that I earned. So I don't mind paying the back $83,000 so I can make two hundred eight. dollars Opportunity cost. A lot of people don't think about opportunity cost. We're always thinking about today. But my future person, so if I'm 40 years old, my 30 years in the future, my 70 years old is looking at me and he's shouting. Like that's what your friend's 20 year old, 30. I don't know how old is he. How old is your friend? He's, he's around uh, 50. 50. So he's 20 year old per friend, person in the future, 50. In 20 years, he'll be 70 years old. His 70-year-old person is saying, you just blew $162,000 of my money. So what I'll teach your friend to do is this. I'll say, if you are a bank, the question I'd say, this is how I do it. Whenever I pay cash, because that's what he just did, he paid cash. Now let's pay the cash back to my future person. Because I want my 20-year-old in the future be fine. I, I don't even pissed off at me. Because he's seen me enjoy life today. He don't want to be working at McDonald's in 20 years. So this is what you want to do. So we're going to go in the account and say, okay, if I had gone to the bank online, Navy Federal, Bank of America, whoever bank, they all have print out what you should do. Bank says, we're going to charge you 7% interest over 20 years. The payment is four sixty five dollars a month. Now... What he should do is take that $465 and start saving it every month into an account. Even if he puts it under his mattress, in 20 years, he's going to save $111,600 back in his account. $111,600. When you look at it, that was the same $60,000 he got it back that he gave, plus interest of $51,643. Now, a person like me will show him where he could put that money, even in a, in a compounding interest account that will also protect his life for his wife, his children, all that. 4% return. 
Now, in 20 years, his future person will have $170,000 back. The same money the bank would have taken. Because when you borrow, when you pay cash, that's called self-financing. You self-finance. So how are you going to pay yourself back? So I pay myself back with interest from the bank, which is the simple interest, the amortized interest, plus compounding interest. So I'm paying myself back twice. So I treat the loan as if I took the loan from my future person. And I pay back to myself. Make sense? It makes a lot of sense. So how can True Legacy Life Group help new prospective uh, insurance professionals in navigating the industry? Very, very good question. Well, one thing is True Legacy Life Group, we're looking for insurance agents. Or even if you're not an insurance agent, you're trying to get into the industry you're looking for something to do part-time. We're hiring. We're looking for you to come join us, right? Especially if you're here in the U.S., you know, Canada, no, we can't do anything for you in Canada. You know, we, I could coach you. That's a different conversation. You know, but if you're a U.S. resident, you're here in America, you have work permit, you could work, you could get, then come learn about money. Because the first thing is not just selling. I need to train you because you need to, you're a consumer too. So we need to fix your situation. Because you, can, you can't go treat somebody if you're sick yourself. So we fix your situation first. Once we fix your situation, now you could now educate the folks in your circle that you know about wealth building strategies. All the things that you need to know to help you. We are an independent organization. So we're not captive. There's no fee to join us. You don't have to pay monthly. We don't do rah, rah, rahs and boom, boom, and you're broke. No, we don't do all that. We are focused and we're very intentional. We're about business. You know, we're, we, we love having fun. We have a great time. But we're also are serious about the people that are put in front of us. So our job is to educate you, help you become a professional in this industry so you could go back and serve your community, help them. So we'll help you with your licensing, you know, show you how to get. We have a very, very reduced rate discount that you could get. When you're studying for the test, one of my guys, actually from one of the social, he just passed his exam. Took him three weeks and he went and knocked it out. The exam is simple. The easiest exam in the world. If I could pass it, man, you all could pass it. Right, 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 right. right. It, you know, it's not as expensive as real estate. I know everybody wants to sell real estate. Listen, insurance is you're selling human real estate and putting value in human real estate. Real estate. And we're going to teach you how to understand it. So even if you don't even sell a policy, you don't have to sell anything if you don't want to. You could just use the information for your own personal, personal gain. gain. And because you're licensed, I could pay you. You could refer people to us. If you're licensed and you say, you know what, Douglas, I have my full-time job. I really don't want to do the business. I don't have time to talk to people because some people don't want to sell nothing to anybody. And right. I get it. You're not, you know, and that's why we do more education. But let's say you just, you know, I'm very busy, but I, I, I know a lot of people then legally, the way I have to pay you, get licensed. I could teach you how to do it correctly. Get licensed, and guess what? When I get a commission, when, I, when you refer somebody to me, I split the case with you. The insurance company will pay you directly. I don't have to pay you. The insurance company will pay you because you're a licensed person. I put you on the application. They allow that, and that's legal way to do it. If anybody is telling you anything different, they're doing it illegally. We don't do affiliation. No, there's no affiliate market. No, you have to be licensed legally to receive commissions in the insurance business. And another thing that another myth, people tell people, get a loan and buy life insurance. Like take money from your home equity line of credit and put it. No, life insurance should be purchased with income because we're doing what? We're, we're putting protection. The first important thing that you always got to remember, life insurance is designed to replace income. If you don't have income, it's not replacing anything. And there has to be an insurable interest when you're putting insurance on someone. You can't just go buy insurance for your neighbor. It don't work that way. They have to have an insurable interest. So there's a lot of education you know, that we do so that people understand. And we teach it to the insurance agent. Because there's a lot. I've met so many insurance agents in business, and they're like, Douglas, I've been in business five years, ten years. I, have, I don't even know all these things you're teaching. Because they don't teach it to us in the... Of course they won't. Because they're more focused on sale, sale, sale. Sale, right. And right. the insurance companies are a manufacturing company. They manufacture products. 
They don't give a care what product you sell. What is product like there's some insurance agents that they say, oh, term insurance is the only thing you should have. Some other insurance agents, oh, whole life is the only thing you should have. And I want IUL, 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 IUL. And they make noise about it. But they don't even understand it themselves. Right. And they push that to everybody. No, you're a professional. It's like, think about it. you're selling human real estate. If I go to a real estate agent that's only selling apartment complex. They don't sell single family homes. Only sell single family homes. Doesn't sell townhomes. Doesn't sell mansions. Right. He only sells you condominium in an apartment complex. Right. Is that who you want to do business with? I need one that has knowledge of all the stuff. That's going to look at me, look at my situation, look at how many children I have, look I'm at saying, me, oh, and say, you know what? Yeah. You should do, look at my finances too right. and say, hey, you cannot afford this right now. Let me help you with this. Right. Instead of just trying to sell you something. Because you remember, everybody's selling something. something. Real estate agent, loan officers, insurance agent, everybody's doing what? Working for commission. Right. right so you right. got to be careful who you're getting your financial education from. Hmm. Or else you're just going to sell something. I mean, you're going to buy something that you don't understand. I've seen so many people come to me and say, somebody was offering me insurance. I don't even understand it. You know, I just bought the policy because, you know, I was doing them a favor. No, don't do me a favor. Hmm. No. Do wow. you, is you, are you doing your doctor a favor when you go to your doctor to, for, doctor, I have a headache. Do me a favor. No. You're trusting the doctor to know what they're doing. Right. So when you go to someone, don't do it for favoring. It's your money. It's your money. You need to understand what, yes. How it is spent. Exactly. Right. Wow. That is very uh, interesting, uh, Mr. Douglas. Thank you uh, so much for uh, today's uh, episode on Diaspora uh, Money series, Diaspora Money Today, uh, on this uh, live podcast where everybody is watching from all around the world, uh, but our main focus is the uh, African diaspora here in the United States. We need to get our people to wake up you know, to this call and get themselves and their properties protected because that is very important. People work hard. Yeah. Some people work, man, from 6 a.m. Oh in the God. morning. They don't come back until 6 p.m. at night. Yeah. You know, and their children are missing on the parental, yeah. you know, uh, the love, the, more, love. The, the, the whole point of you buying the house. Buying the house, you know? you know, and at the end of the day, when they die, the house goes back to the government. The house goes back to the government. So those kind Ooh. of folks out there need to learn more and understand more about this uh, financial, uh, you know, intelligence and the financial uh, education that uh, Mr. Douglas here is giving to us. Thank you so much, uh, visionary leader and the chief marketing mm -hmm. officer, True Legacy Life Group here in the uh, heart of, uh, you know, Washington, Washington D.C., DC yep. uh, Metropolises. Thank you so much. And one thing I want to add real quick, I do an event, I, I do a, 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 a Zoom every Sunday. Okay, what Just time to what time? On Sunday at 9 p.m. 9 p.m., okay. Eastern time, okay. where I educate people on how strategies they could use to continue. And it's a free event I do. Okay. You could log in, anybody could log in. So if you go on my on my post, on my Instagram, for those of you that don't follow me, you go to I am Douglas Aze. You see it. I think now I have like 63,000 followers. followers okay. So that's the one you know, because there's a lot of fake ones out there, you know, and it has a check mark verified. Go on there, click on my, uh, on my link, you know, my bio. And you see the cash value strategy. Register for it, and then uh, or go to trustdouglas.com. There's a link on there as well, okay. so you could plug into the um, Sunday night. You register for it, you'll be able to be a part of the on Sundays, Sundays 9, p.m. 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. Where Mr. Douglas will be teaching uh, everyone. I will also join this Sunday yeah, to to learn more on this uh, financial. Uh, education because it is important for all of us yes. to be financially uh, enlightened and financially informed on how we spend our hard earned yeah. dollar. Thank you so much, Man. Once again, Mr. Douglas. Thank you, <laughs> yes, sir. So much for your time, it. no problem. And uh, we'll continue to uh, talk more on life insurance policies and why it is important to have a life insurance. <laughs>